What's up guys? Today's in between episode is a day in the life of being a landlord. As you know from my other videos, I have three properties up and down the UK and I like to give you both the ups and the downs, not just the money that I make and the profit that I make from my buy to properties, but also the issues that come up, the stuff that really gets on your nerves, the big nightmares, the little nightmares. But I like to keep it real with you guys. I wanna give you all of the glamour, so the money that I make, all of the good things from property, but also the less glamorous sides. Today, we are talking about mold, guys. This is an issue that has come out of nowhere and left me 250 pounds out of pocket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the issue, talk about how to fix it and lessons I've learned in the process. Now, all of you, pretty much all of you know what mold is. Mold grows on food, but mold can also grow in the house. And the causes of mold are generally where there is excess moisture in the air. So if you go to your bathroom right now, you'll probably see spots of mold around your bathtub, in between the grouting and the filler, and it usually looks black, right? And that happens in most bathrooms, in most homes, because unless you've got a really good extractor fan, it's hard to get rid of all of the moisture in the air within your bathroom, because obviously, you know, you're running the taps, you're running the shower, and and it doesn't always escape now the issue in my buy to let that my tenant made me aware of is with regard to mold in different rooms of the house so it's not just in the bathroom but it's also in the living room and also in the kitchen so when i bought this flat guys it was brand spanking sparkling new there was no snags no issues nothing it was it was fresh it was box fresh and what's happened is that over the last two years i've had two tenants in this flat now and they haven't properly ventilated the flat. And this is a golden rule from this whole video. If you take away nothing, take away this, guys. When you have tenants in your flat, make sure that you constantly tell them to properly ventilate the flat or the house. How do they do that? By opening the windows. Now, most tenants will not want to open the windows in their flat because, you know, they want to stay warm, especially during the winter months. But it is so important because as you can see now on screen, here are some pictures of the mold that has accumulated in the flat. So this is in the living room around the window. You've got this kind of misty white. I don't really know what to call that, guys, but um, you've got it there. And then on the paint itself, the paint is crumbling. And I'm going to tell you more about how I've gone about fixing this. But you can see this mold is absolutely eaten away um, the paint around the window frame and also it's growing on the window frame. Here's another angle going further up that same window. So you've got that white, those white spores on the frame there. You've got the black kind of round stains on the wall going up to the ceiling up here as well. So it's growing all the way up the wall and onto the ceiling. And this is the same issue, but in the kitchen, on the kitchen window. Pardon me, guys, I said that the issue was in the bathroom and the living room. It's actually in the kitchen and the living room. So this is the kitchen window. Again, you've got the black mold growth on the wall. The paint is crumbling. It's on the window frame and it's also on the window sill there. And then lastly, here's a close up of the window sill once again. So just to give you some context and background, my tenant actually sent me an email a couple of weeks ago telling me that there was this issue uh, with mold. And that was news to me because, you know, in my head, the flat's brand new, the tenant's taking care of the flat. And not to say that my tenant isn't taking care of the flat. This is something that just happens. You know, it's part of being a landlord, guys. So my tenant sent me a text and reported the problem to me, as she should, because prolonged exposure to mold can cause serious damage to health and also furniture and fittings of the of the property itself. But as a landlord, my responsibility is to my tenant. And if my tenant was to get sick through prolonged exposure to mold, whether it's her fault or not, that would be my responsibility to fix as a landlord. So she's reported the issue to me. And, you know, for those of you who are landlords or who are looking to become landlords, you what you really want to do, especially when there's an issue with your tenant in the flat, no matter how major or minor it seems in your eyes, you really want to be responsive. So I emailed her back straight away saying, of course, let's fix this. She obviously explained in her email that the issue was with regard to mold. So I responded to her straight away and I asked her for pictures of the issue. And this is really important for several reasons. First and foremost, when you have pictures, you're able to accurately describe the issue to a tradesman who can then come and fix it. And 
it makes their job, the tradesman's job, a lot more easier when he has a picture of the issue so that he can assess it and say, okay, this looks like X or Y or Z, and this is how I intend to fix it, and this is how much it's gonna cost. You're giving them a clear illustration of the issue. Secondly, it's really good to keep an audit trail. So if there was any further unforeseen problems further down the line, you have a really clear record of how you dealt with the problem in a responsible and timely fashion. I really encourage you guys to carry out these discussions with your tenants whenever there is an issue via email so that you know if there were any unforeseen issues say for example there was a dispute further on down the line as to whether I dealt with the issue of mold in my flat adequately or not I can go back to these emails and show anybody that demands it that I responded to the issue within 24 hours I employed the tradesman within 48 hours and I got the issue fixed within two weeks so you're covering yourselves from that aspect as well guys try to keep things via email and text as much as possible pictures are great as well because it just adds to the audit trail and it can demonstrate clearly how you've dealt with it so when the tradesman and i'll go on to how i got a tradesman to come in and fix the issue further on in this video but when a tradesman comes and fixes it i'm going to request that the tenant takes photos of the issue fixed as well so i've got this end-to-end -end record of the issue and how I addressed it and how I fixed it. Which leads me on nicely guys, how did I go about fixing this issue? I sourced the pictures from my tenant as I've just showed you. And what I did is I went on to a few websites. I went on to two websites, one's called Rated People and one's called My Builder. And on these websites, you can basically advertise jobs that you need doing around the house, whether it's fixing mold, replacing a boiler, a refurb of your property. I mean, you can literally post under pretty much every single category you can think of. So I posted the same job on both sites just to get a bunch of quotes. And that's really important, guys. You wanna have a few quotes that you can compare and contrast them. That's what I like to do whenever I have an issue. I wanna get a few quotes in and compare and contrast and pick the best person for the job. So I ended up getting a tradesman off of my builder. You can see here, this is the job that I posted. I said there's damp and mold formed around the window. And I gave a brief description of what the issue was. I said there's damp and mold that are formed around the window in the living room and also the kitchen. And I added the photographs that I've just showed you. So here are the photographs. And what happens is that tradespeople will see this job posted and they will bid to fix it. So they'll get in contact with you and say, hey, we've seen your job on the website we're interested we can do it for this price and you basically compare and contrast and say yes or no so i got a really good chap who was very professional to come to the property he initially did a review of the property assessed it and he took readings of the amount of mold that was in the atmosphere and he said the readings were quite high which you know makes sense and then he said he can come back he can spray the mold to kill it and make sure that it doesn't grow back in that same spot again and then he can actually repaint around the windowsill and wall with a special paint that prevents mold from growing back there and not only was that the best offer i got in terms of price but he was very professional turned up when he said he would send me invoices was very communicative i would use him again if the same issue arose i hope that it doesn't but that's how much it costs to fix it so he's already been round he's already assessed it and he's due to treat the mold this week and that should be the issue fixed as i said i'm going to ask the tenant to send me a picture of the finished job so that I can get confirmation that it's all been done and have that as an audit trail. And also, you know, I wanna protect the health of my tenant because, you know, I don't want my tenant sleeping and breathing mold 24 seven in my flat, I, I do care about my tenant. So that's a day in the life, a less glamorous day in the life of being a landlord, guys. What are some lessons learned from this? Well, three main lessons learned. First and foremost, it's important to get your tenants to ventilate your property and open the windows regularly. It's important to explain to them that this is what causes mold. Not only does it damage the property and cause a cost, but it also can affect their health. You know, most tenants, as I said, they want to keep warm. They don't really want the windows open like that. But I think if you explain it to them from the perspective that their health will suffer, they're naturally going to be more inclined to do it because they're going to want to preserve their own health in the long term. Secondly, go and visit your flat regularly so you can spot these things early. It's a little bit more tricky for me because my flat is in Sheffield. However, I do need to visit the property more regularly. That's one thing that this issue has taught me. As you saw from the pictures, the mold is actually 
actually quite bad and I do feel if I went more regularly to the flat I probably would have spotted it growing a lot earlier and probably saved a lot more money treating this and then lastly 250 pounds guys keep a reserve fund for events just like this three weeks ago this wasn't on my radar it wasn't even an issue and then literally in just one email from my tenant I now have to fork out 250 pounds this is why you need to keep a reserve fund you don't just spend all of the profits that you make from having a buy to let property you save some you keep some behind to cover you for events like this luckily I do that and this cost was covered. So that is everything that I wanted to share. If you have any more questions or want to share your own stories, let me know in the comment section below. Drop a like and I will see you on Monday.